Hello everyone. Today's video will be about differentiation from first principles. Many of you will know the formula that if y is equal to ax to the n, the derivative of this with respect to x is na x to the n minus 1. That is times by the power reduced to the power by 1. But this video is going to be about, going to be about this from first principles, i.e. where does this come from? If we start with a straight line graph, this is y and this is x, a straight line that passes through two points, yeah, and here, where well, this has x1, y1, this is coordinates x2, y2. The gradient of this, you should know, is delta y, i.e. the change in y, divided by delta x. And that's equal to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Okay, so this is a general formula that allows us to calculate the gradient of the straight line that passes through two points. We move on to a curve on xy axis again. Uh, we have a curve that looks something like this. I don't know what it is, but we're going to define this as f of x. Um, and I want to find the gradient of this curve at a given point x, I'm going to say is here. And so this point has coordinates x, comma, f of x. Now, if I take this area, I'm going to, I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to draw this over here. So again, we're going to have now a curve that looks something like that. But our x point is somewhere here x comma f of x. And now I'm going to take another point that is very close to this. In fact, it's going to be a distance delta x away from it. So we have x plus delta x. For our x coordinate and our y coordinate then is going to be x f of x plus delta x. We can see that the gradient of the line that joins these two points is going to be pretty close to the gradient of the curve. It won't be exactly the same because there's a difference here. This delta x is a number. It's going to be an amount different to this x value. So the gradient value that we're going to calculate from this is going to be close, but not exactly the gradient that we're looking for. But again, if we apply this to this formula. We end up with the gradient is equal to f of x plus delta x minus f of x, as in y2 minus y1, all divided by x2, which is x plus delta x, subtract x1, which is just x. So we have a plus x and a minus x on the bottom, so they cancel. We end up with the gradient is equal to f of x plus delta x minus f of x, divided by delta x, that's all that's left underneath. But as we just said, this isn't going to be exactly the gradient of the curve at that point, unless this delta x value becomes zero. And what we do with this is we, we take the limit as delta x tends to zero. Basically, all we're doing here is we're making this delta x value smaller and smaller and smaller, so that this gradient value becomes closer and closer and closer to the exact one. So we can say that the that dy by dx, which is the notation we use for gradient once we've taken the limit, is equal to the limit as delta x tends to zero, i.e. we've taken delta x to be zero now, of f of x plus delta x minus f of x, all divided by delta x. So this looks like you know, a hell of a formula really here. Um, and I'm going to show you how we apply this into a situation where we want to find the gradient of a curve that's given. So. If we have uh, f of x is equal to 2x squared plus 3, so this is our function, uh, and we've been asked to find the gradient of this. Well, using our rule, we could say that dy by dx is equal to uh, 2 times by 2, which is 4x to the 1, but we don't write that, and the 3 disappears, so it just becomes 4x. But what happens if we wanted to do this from first principles? Well. Substituting this into our formula above, we can say that f of x plus delta x is equal to 2 times x plus delta x. 
or squared, because instead of x, we now have x plus delta x as our value, plus 3. We multiply this out, we end up with 2x squared plus 4x delta x plus 2 delta x squared plus 3. So if we write this out in this form up here, we can say that dy by dx, the limit is delta x tends to 0 of f of x. Now f of x is 2x squared plus 3. This is, sorry, let's write that the wrong way around. f of x plus delta x is 2x squared plus 4x delta x plus 2 delta x squared plus 3. Now subtract f of x, and f of x is 2x squared plus 3. I put this in brackets just to remind me that I'm subtracting the whole amount of f of x, not just the first term. And then it's all of that divided by delta x. OK. Should be able to see that we have a minus 2x squared here and a plus 2x squared here, so they go. We also have a plus 3 here and a minus 3 here, so they also go. So what we end up with is 4x delta x plus 2 delta x squared divided by delta x. And this is the limit as delta x tends to 0. We've got delta x underneath and all the terms upstairs on the numerator of the fraction are also in delta x, so we can, we can cancel the delta x in every term. So we can say that's the limit delta x tends to 0 of 4x plus 2 delta x. So now this is the stage where actually go, we're actually going to take the limit, i.e. wherever delta x appears within this, we're now going to let that equal 0. So dy by dx is now equal to 4x plus 2 times by 0, because delta x is now 0. So we are therefore we can say that dy by dx is just 4x. And that was an example of using differentiation from first principles to find the gradient of a curve, not just applying a standard rule. Thank you for watching the video. I'll see you next time.